Huh? Who are you guys? I know what you've been up to. Smuggling weapons to violent brigades in the desert while working for the Corps? <laughs> Pretty bold, if you ask me. Shh! Keep your voice down! How do you know all that? Come with me. We should take this elsewhere. I'll be happy to talk things over once we're somewhere private. This place should do. Alright, back to my question. How did you all know about me? Don't worry about that for now. You know what kind of punishment you'll face once we report you to the core, I assume. Wait, wait, wait. There's no need to jump the gun. Let's talk this out. What are your terms? So what's in it for you anyway, Mora? Well, I was a little tight on money at the time, and Kusela took good care of me in the past. I waited in my mind, and I couldn't find a reason to turn the opportunity down. I wouldn't only be helping my benefactor, but I could also make some quick mora. Let me tell you how it is. We're investigating Dakana Lakmar, and we're gonna put an end to their operations. If you provide some help for us, then we might just put in a good word later to reduce the terms of your punishment. Hey, why don't we discuss this a little first? Listen, I made quite a bit of more from my last run. You just give me a number, and I'm sure we can... Shut it. My patience is running out. You should know when a mercenary is after something other than money. All right, all right, sheesh. But you gotta promise you'll put in some nice words for me later. They're always on the move. Here's the spot they were at the last time I made my delivery to the desert. Feel free to go have a look. I'm just telling you, though, it's not on me if they're not there anymore. Sure. And then you can forget about any nice words from us. Hey, come on. Now you're just being unreasonable. Really? And how do I know you're not leading us straight into a trap? Don't forget, you're the one with no bargaining chips. All right, I get it, I get it. Why don't you go take a look, and if they're not there anymore, I'll try to figure out something else for y'all. <laughs> now that's more like it. Let's move. And as for you, try to stick around the city until we get back. You don't want us to call the folks from the core and have them drag you back to the city. Uh, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Hmm. Seems like we're in luck. That should be their camp right up ahead. Let's go. We'll finally get to the bottom of this ourselves. I'm here to see Kusela. Tell him to get out here. Yeah. Why are you here?
Enough fighting. We all know each other, and I don't want to take things too far. Just bring Kusela to me. There's no use hiding him anymore. Uh... Did you understand a single word I just said? Or do I need to bash your skull in some more? All right, everyone. Let's all just calm down for a second. Um, Dia. The boss can't come out and see you anymore. He died a long time ago. What? Seems like you've been out of the loop for a while. Guess that's for the best, though. At least, that's what the old man wanted. When did he die? What happened to him? A few years ago, Kusela broke up Dakano Akmar and went to the Deshret's Relic's headquarters by himself. So is that when you guys started acting up? We would prefer to call it taking revenge. Every last person in Deshret's relics must pay in blood for what they did. <sighs> Let me start from the beginning. Dia, do you know how the head of the relics maintained order internally? Overwhelming strength and unquestionable authority? Those were a part of it, yes. But just those on their own weren't enough. They had another tool at their disposal. They call it a person's record. Regardless of whether they joined by their own will or were coerced, every person in Deshret's relics were forced to leave a record of themselves at headquarters. Whether it be their deepest sin, some unforgivable act, or their most immoral exploit, the record served both as a symbol of loyalty and the perfect material for blackmail. That's precisely it. Every one of us have a record. Me, Bashar, Tikridi, and all the boys who grew up with Dia and ended up joining our ranks. But you, Dia, you were never asked to provide a record, were you? I... I never even knew this was a requirement. You were probably the only person in all of Deshret's relics who didn't know about it. Ever since you were born, Boss had been trying to shield you from this organization's sinister rules. Not only that, but he also banned all of us from committing any nefarious acts. He said he'd take care of the dues we had to pay regularly to headquarters. But in the end, he was just an ordinary person. What could he do? He was forced to go to headquarters again and again to account for missed dues and incomplete records. He'd come up with all kinds of excuses and get beaten up as a result. We all knew he was doing that for you. He wanted to get you out of this world, no matter what it took. And that's why he became a shell of himself and couldn't walk without a cane! Wait, but... that doesn't make any sense. I didn't know about any of this, and I'd never seen him get injured or beaten. Because you were too young at the time. How would you ever tell between wounds from a beating and wounds from battle? When you left home after that final argument with him, he seemed to age by a decade overnight. Even his hair went gray. So, even the blazing beasts were... Yep. It was all his doing. Had he not arranged them to come to you, you probably would have been reduced to a pulp before you ever left the desert. A few years ago, Boss said he needed to make another trip to headquarters. He was already pretty weak then, and we all assumed he was going to get beaten again. I suggested that he hand the role of leadership over to me, but he said there was no longer any need, since the Khan al-Ahmar would soon be no more. His words made no sense to me, but that night, we heard that a massive fire tore through headquarters and raised everyone's records to ash. Everyone gained their freedom that night. Many members fled, not just from our ranks, but from the other brigades as well. But how could we leave with a clear conscience? All of us who knew exactly what had happened. 
The boss can't have just died for nothing. Those heartless jerks at headquarters took him from us. From that point on, the sole purpose of Dakan al-Ahmar became revenge. The big fire that boss started was quite a blow to headquarters strength. It's given us the opportunity to launch our attack. Even though we're outnumbered, we vowed to see our revenge through to the very end. There were people from headquarters who changed their names and went into hiding. Some fled to other brigades, and others escaped to the rainforest. But we won't let any of them escape our wrath. They'll all pay for what they've done. We've suffered plenty of losses as well. To keep going, we need an enormous amount of supplies. From food and medicine to weaponry and explosives. All we can do is exchange our loot for Mora, and then use that to get supplies. We forged Boss's handwriting and sent out many letters to his former friends. Thankfully, many people were willing to come to our aid. We were also able to attract many mercenaries who shared our goal. We've endured unspeakable pain to win many impossible battles. Deshret's relics have become weaker and weaker, and now we finally have an opportunity to directly strike their headquarters. Uh, Paimon doesn't know what to say anymore. <laughs> we do know right from wrong, but we were sinners from the very beginning. We do not deserve the freedom that the boss won for us with his life. Boss always loved his old-fashioned hero stories. Those tales about sacrificing yourself to save the world. We used to always laugh at him for it. But in the end, he really went and lived those stories out himself. As for me, I never considered myself a hero. We're all the lowest of the low. We have no right to even imagine such an existence. But... Maybe those hero stories he liked foreshadowed everything that was to come. The spirit of the hero touched all those he had saved, and more and more people joined his cause. Maybe we were all just acting along with the play in the beginning. But as we acted the parts and recited the lines, we were drawn in. And now, we want to see the story through to the end. I'm sorry, dear. I know you always found us insufferable ever since you were young. Just think of this as a madman ranting. <sighs> I'll go with you. Huh? Dia? You wanna go with them? I grew up with these guys, and I know they're not bad people. It's just that some situations get so bad that it's difficult to tell good from evil. All I know is that Deshret's relics must be destroyed. Furthermore, I want to go see the place for myself. I want to know if my father is still there. I know you don't want to get involved in this, so there's no need for you to tag along. I can do this on my own. Yeah, Paimon feels like we'd only regret it if we don't see this through to the end. <sighs> Thank you. We'll be a lot stronger together with you. <laughs> I bet Boss would lose his mind if he ever knew you'd join us at the very last moment like this. Considering all the losses and injuries we sustained, we can't afford to turn down someone as powerful as you. He can think whatever he wants. But the fact is, I owe him this much. I guess it all comes down to this. What a bummer. I just had to get injured now, right before the final fight. Be sure to punch one of them for me, huh? <laughs>